You have redeemed us, Lord, by your blood, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us into a kingdom, priests for our God. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, O the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of our redemption and of our salvation, listen to the voice of our pleading and grant that those you have redeemed by the shedding of your Son's blood may have life through you and under your protection rejoice forever unharmed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul came to Antioch in Pisidia, he said in the synagogue, My brothers, children of the family of Abraham, and those others among you who are God-fearing, to us this word of salvation has been sent. The inhabitants of Jerusalem and their leaders failed to recognize him, and by condemning him they fulfilled the oracles of the prophets that are read Sabbath after Sabbath. For even though they found no grounds for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and placed him in a tomb. God raised him from the dead, though, and for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. These are now his witnesses before the people. We ourselves are proclaiming this good news to you, that what God promised our fathers, has, he has brought to fulfillment for us, their children, by raising up Jesus, as it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule them with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. And now, O kings, give heed. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice before him. With trembling, rejoice. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Even though we may not see it as so, the words that Jesus tells us in the beginning of this gospel, they're supposed to be consoling words. But even when we think about it and when we repeat those words in our head over and over again, they sound maybe a little bit empty because he says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Well, if I'm struggling, if I'm suffering, if I'm mourning, if I'm hungry, if I don't have shelter, if I don't have anything to eat, I will be troubled. I will be anxious. I will be desperate. I will be feeling so many things because obviously I'm still human. I'm still living in this world and I still have to face everything that comes my way. So I will be troubled. Chances are I will be troubled. But we have to maybe look deeper, deeper into what Jesus is saying. Because at this particular moment, he was trying to bring consolation to his disciples, to the twelve that were with him, because they started to feel a little fearful and anxious also, the fact that Jesus told them that there was going to be one day when he was no longer with them. And so that's when he said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust me, have faith in me, because I am going to heaven to make sure that everything is prepared for you that everything is well and organized, and that you have a place in that heavenly kingdom. This was Jesus' way of saying, don't get caught up in the things of this world. Because everything that you do here, everything that you experience here, everything that goes on here, is only meant to prepare you for heaven. Because that is your true home. That is where we all are meant to be, with Jesus in heaven. And so whenever we get caught up in the things of this world, especially nowadays with everything that's going on, when we're suffering and struggling because we can't see our families, we have family members who have unfortunately died, and we cannot see them, we cannot be with them, we cannot say goodbye to them. Let us listen to Jesus' words. Do not let your hearts be troubled, because those are things of the world but the world that awaits us after this one, the world that we are meant to be in with Jesus, has no more pain, has no more death, has no more injustice, has no more suffering for any one of us who believe and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. The things of this world are passing things. The life that awaits us with Jesus, the kingdom that Jesus promised us, the, G the kingdom that Jesus is going to prepare for us, is an everlasting kingdom, a kingdom that will last forever. And yes, surely the things of this world will have an effect on us. We will be troubled. But let those troubles not rob you of your peace. Let those troubles not rob you of the faith, of the zeal to follow and to continue to come to Jesus. Because we know where he is going. We know where he is going to reside waiting for us. And now like he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We have to make sure that we are aware of this reality, we are aware of this fact. And whenever we seem lost, we can just come back to Jesus, for he is our way. Whenever we are confused by anything that goes on in our lives, come back to Jesus because he is the truth. And when we feel desperate because life seems to be going away from us, 
let us come back to Jesus because he is our life. With faith and devotion, we lift up our needs to our Heavenly Father, trusting that He will hear us. For all who lead the Church, may the Lord grant them strength in guiding the Church toward healing and a sacramental transformation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, may God give them courage and strength in seeking out justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those struggling with depression, anxiety, or mental health challenges, may God's healing hand provide peace and recovery. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the community of faith that is joining us through this Facebook feed, <clears throat> may the grace of the Holy Spirit empower us to live the gospel faithfully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people still suffering from the coronavirus and for those next to them who are being affected indirectly by it as well. And for all those people giving their time, their energy and effort to make sure that this virus is controlled and give health to those patients that they are in their care. That the Lord's healing hand and protection may come upon them as well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions that have come through through our prayer intentions portal on our website. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rest in the eternal peace with all the saints and angels in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And especially today, we pray for Andrew Aguiar and for Valerie Wiblishauser. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the prayers and intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we offer these prayers to you, God of mercy, and we give you thanks and praise for hearing us. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, all become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, we pray, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have a few announcements. Um, as we know, we have been doing every single day at noon the novena to Our Lady of Fatima here live on Facebook. So we ask that you join us for that, um, even YouTube, if you are watching this on YouTube. But also the prayers for each day of the novena are posted on our website, assumptionpeakskill.org. So if you cannot follow us at noon on YouTube or on Facebook, please be sure to go to our website so you can follow along all the prayers um, for the novena. And we have them since day one um, up to the, um, the closest day that we are in right now, which is day five. Um, and also, every single day, remind everyone that we're doing the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. and the Rosary at 7 p.m. and we're reading a document from John Paul II that was promulgated in 2002 called the Rosary of the Virgin Mary. We're reading, we're reading different excerpts from this document before we begin the Rosary, so please also join us for that, especially during this month of Our Lady. And because it's the month of Our Lady, um, again, since we cannot do the May crowning um, in the church, we've been asking people to do a May crowning of their own statue, their own image of Our Lady at home, and send us a picture of it, and we'll feature it on our Facebook post, on our Facebook page. And so far, it has been a blast. People have sent so many beautiful, beautiful pictures of their images of Mary with a little crown of flowers on her head. So thank you again very much, and keep us coming, keep those images coming. 
um, if you have a maid crowning in your home. And also a new addition, a new announcement on Wednesday, which is the actual feast of Our Lady of Fatima, we're going to have here in the chapel a concert, a Marian concert with our very own Mary Mancini and Mario Taka. As you know, they're the cantors that uh, play usually and sing here at our Sunday Masses. And so they're going to give a live Facebook Live Marian concert here in our chapel in honor of Our Lady of Fatima. And so please be sure to join us on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. here live on Facebook. We're also going to try to broadcast it on YouTube, but that's maybe above my pay grade when it comes to technology. So we'll see how that goes. But please, again, be sure to join us and share the information. The flyer is already up on our Facebook page and also on our website. So please be sure to share it with people so that we can honor and venerate Our Lady with hymn and song. And also, Mother's Day is coming up. This Sunday is Mother's Day. And so it has been a tradition sort of in this parish to have Mass in the cemetery. Obviously, because of the situation that we're in right now, it was a little bit difficult. But Father Esteban has agreed that he will, the Masses on Sunday, will be broadcasted on Facebook Live from the cemetery. So if you have a personal intention or a, a motherly intention that you'd like us to pray for during that Mass, Please be sure, again, to go to our website, assumptionpeakskill.org. And then on the right side of a tab, you'll see that it says prayer intentions. And so be sure to click there and write down your name, your information, and the intention that you would like us to pray for, especially for this Sunday. If you would like us to pray for your mother, living or deceased, please be sure to um, send us those prayer requests, and we will include them on the Sunday liturgy, especially for mothers. And there's a little tab right next to it um, of the a little icon of the we share. If you want to include an offering for the uh, for this um, masses for this prayer request, you are more than welcome to do so. Again, it's not a mandatory thing, um, so please again do consider, however, to support the church, support the parish. Um, and I think that's it for now. So please, as always, remain faithful, remain hopeful, because the Lord is risen and He is always with us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do, thou o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Prayer to the Virgin Mary for protection. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, Our Lady of New York, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide, so that as you did at Cana of Galilee, Joy in feasting my return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He who took our sufferings upon himself and bore the sorrows, our sorrows, to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. A prayer in time of need. Loving Father, our life and our hope, come to our aid in this difficult and uncertain time. Look with mercy on those who suffer from the coronavirus. Bless them and their families with your healing, consolation, and peace. Guide and be with all who care for them. Give wisdom and insight to those working to stop the spread of this disease and help them find a way to cure it. Console our anxious hearts, strengthen our faith, and give us the grace to trust in your goodness. Restore communities affected by the virus to wholeness and health, and in your loving mercy, give your help and protection to all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.